This video is powered by patrons. See the link in the description and learn how you can support videos like this. Peter Parker had always loved New York. From when he was born, through when his parents died and he lived with his Aunt May and Uncle Ben. He met his best friends Mary Jane and Harry here. He studied here at ESU. He found his love for science here. His love for photography here. Beautiful. He loves it for its sights, its sounds, its smells, its food, its people. You're okay by me. It brims with everything he loves, despite the ugliness that often oozes through the surface. The crime, the hate, the corruption, all the things that hold his city back. And if he's honest with himself, he'd tell you all these things hold him back too. Because for eight years, ever since the bite from that spider, he has shaped his life, his very being, around stopping this crime and helping the city he loves. His work suffers. Parker, where are you? We need to run an equipment check. I'm almost there, blocks away. This tardiness is starting to become a pattern. Come on, Parker, you're better than this. His relationships suffer. His widowed aunt hardly sees him. His best friend Harry has disappeared to Europe. And Mary Jane? They never discussed completely why their plans to move in together were abruptly replaced by a breakup. But he knows him abruptly swinging out of dinner dates can't have helped. He doesn't care about money, but when he was lauded for his science genius throughout his education, he assumed he'd have a few dollars in his pocket. But being a masked vigilante with scruples doesn't pay the bills, it seems. It's sure not paying for his one-room apartment in Chinatown. Hi, Mr. Muggins. Uh, if this is about the rent... Eviction proceedings will start Friday unless full payment is received by close of business. Even when he's not wearing the mask, he seems to manage to choose the path less paid. He could have worked for Harry's father's company, Oscorp, for big money, but turned it down to work on Otto Octavius's underfunded prosthetic limb project instead. He could have monetized his ever-growing celebrity as the web-slinging Spider-Man, but keeping his anonymity was more important. He can't make royalties on merchandise if they don't know where to send the checks. And in that work of finding and fighting crime, he sees immense wealth and the means to make it just lying around. But he'll never touch dirty money. Even when he won the Wilson Fisk Science Prize back in 2011, he could not accept the prize money. Fisk's money was dirtiest of all. No way was I going to take his money, even though we could have used it. So that's why today, October 3rd, 2018, is such a pleasing day for Peter because his work over the last eight years is about to pay off. The day he can see Wilson Fisk put behind bars with a charge that sticks. All units, level four mobilization. Location, Fisk Tower. Fisk? He has butted heads with Fisk for eight years. He fought and won against other villains, of course, over those years. Shocker, Electro, Vulture and the rest. All sent to the Raft, a max security prison off Manhattan's shoreline. He's fought these foes, mostly on his own, but in recent years, an ally within the NYPD has helped them build an ironclad case against Fisk. Captain Yuri Watanabe. We're about to go in. I can't wait to see Willie's face when you slap the cops off you. Do your thing. Willie has been clever. He has many reputable businesses, but many more less reputable ones lying behind them. They don't call him the kingpin for nothing. He has every crime element in the city dancing to his tune and he takes a slice of all of it. He controls every shady deal and infraction while maintaining complete separation from them. How is this happening? But the NYPD and Spider-Man have done the work. They have the warrants, and although they meet resistance, they have their man. Good luck, Willie. I have a feeling you're gonna need it. I'm the one who kept order in this city! In one month you wish you had me back! It's doubtful Peter heard those words through the swinging noise of the city, but in the kingpin toppling and heading to the raft, there is left a vacuum that will engulf the city and change Peter's world forever. 
I'm the Patient Wolf and I'm a video game storyteller. I find and retell the stories of many great video game sagas. If you enjoy this video, leave a like, subscribe and get notified of future videos. And if you would like to contribute to the hundreds of hours these videos take and become a part of an exclusive group of people that get to screen these videos months in advance, become a patron today. Click the link in the description to find out what you can watch right now before anyone else. I'm the Patient Wolf. Sit back, tune out and discover or rediscover the story of Marvel's Spider-Man. It's only really Mary Jane that knows of Peter's secret job as a vigilante. His other job at the lab was just as important to him. It was helping make the world a better place, but in a different way. And it was even more important to Peter at this moment, as Octavius Industries was on the cusp of a breakthrough. Prosthetics controlled by brain impulses, to give the user the control and agency over the limb they lost. But on this day, as usual, there aren't enough hours in it. I'm sorry I'm late. Oh. You started without me. It's fine, Parker. I invented this equipment. I think I can handle it. <laughs> Dr. Artavis, are you okay? <clears throat> Another setback. That's science, it seems. Test, fail, iterate. But for this small team, time is running out. The city's funding committee are losing patience, and unless they lock down this prototype, the project will be shuttered. But Peter has faith in Otto. He has admired his brilliance for years. He sought his mentorship while still in college. He made me realize I could do as much good for the world in a lab coat as I could in tights. And Otto recognized promise in him. The boy is a genius. <sighs> a chronically late genius. Peter knows the faith Otto has put in him. He is resolved to do everything he can to help lock down this prototype. Doc's made huge breakthroughs his whole career, but he's always been upstaged, usually by Oscorp. Peter has had no shortage of mentors shaping his ideals, philosophies and motivations. He has Otto, the tireless inventor with fierce optimism despite their many setbacks. We'll resume tomorrow. Short break, then back to creating the future. He has his Aunt May, who has always been there for him as much as she has for others. For the last five years, she has been the engine behind the city's homeless shelter, Feast. Peter is often at the shelter helping out when he can, but today, he is here to mark his aunt's great work. You helping me through college and working here. I just wish there were more people like you in the world. Five years ago, you walked in here and told me you were inspired by my mission to help others. Now it's you who inspires me. Thank you, May, for everything. And Martin Lee is fast becoming another guru for Peter. He looks up to him and the work he's doing here. Despite Martin's success in business, he focuses as much energy on the city's homeless and has set up these shelters in the city. Peter admires how much he cares and how much he can juggle. It gives him hope that he can keep his two jobs going so he can help the city like Martin does. Well, May's always told me if you help someone, you help everyone. And Peter's positive influences in his life don't stop there. He also receives inspiration amongst his peers. And as Yuri calls reporting a break-in at Wilson Fisk's estate sale, he gets to see one of those inspirations he has not seen for a long time. Hey, Pete. Curiosity, the incessant search for truth, is what he admires most about Mary Jane. In searching for dirt on Fisk's ancient artifact imports, she narrowly escapes these armed men. Where is the file? Those masks, who are these guys? There's someone else here. They must have taken it. Mary Jane has taken it. In her role as reporter for the Daily Bugle, she has duped her way into Rose Roseman's auction house. Wait, I recognize that statue. Fisk's statue, she knew from Peter, had a secret compartment, and she also knew that Wilson Fisk had in the past used it to hide documents on his more iniquitous business dealings. These masked men are here for this file. On it is the name of the owner of Oscorp, Harry's father, Norman Osborne, and the words, Devil's Breath. In endeavoring to escape safely with this file, the masked men snatch what they came for. And Spider-Man forces their retreat. How about that file? What's in it that these guys want so bad? I'm not clear 
what Devil's Breath is, but it seemed to scare Fisk. Fisk was hired to build a secret research lab for it. Not only are these masked men new to Peter, but they also have a power the likes of which he's never seen. Their fists and their weapons exude a dangerous energy. Who are these people, and why is this file so important to them? Despite the mystery, Peter is grateful to see Mary Jane again. It's been too long. Do you remember why we broke up? Saved by the siren. Talk to you later. Go. Cool. Spider-Man is always on call. Spider-Man and Yuri Watanabe make a good team. Being looped into the Oscorp installed surveillance tech keeps them in sync with down to the minute reports on the goings on in the city. If the boys in blue can't react, the man in red and blue will. Looks like there's a break in happening near me. I'm on it. I knew Jameson was wrong about you. Gotta split before the cops get here. Never know how they'll react to me. Not all cops within the NYPD appreciate being upstaged by a vigilante. Jameson's right. You put on a big show, but all you do is leave a mess behind for everyone else. I call out injustice, corruption, and crimes against humanity because I adore this city. And I want it to be better. Since leaving the Daily Bugle, J. Jonah Jameson has shaped his podcast just the facts around airing his disdain for Spider-Man. Just imagine what sort of deviant personality would dress up like that in the first place. Spider-Man does not care if you live or die. And pockets of the city's people and the police tap into this. Hey, you freaking masked menace. My brother worked for Fisk. Freaking unemployed now. Thanks a lot. But despite the haters, he knows most appreciate his work. Wow. Just high five Spider-Man. Thanks for keeping us safe, Spider-Man. He only lets in the opinion of those close to him, those he respects. The people who do great things in this world are those who don't let bullies like him stand in their way. The city needs him now more than ever. Let me explain something to you about crime bosses. As soon as one goes down, every punk with a gun decides he's the next godfather. But does that whip-headed moron give a damn? Of course not. Of course he gives a damn. But on this occasion, Jameson is right. There has been a definite rise in street crime since Fisk's incarceration. Fisk did keep these wannabe pushers in check. Wait a minute, what's that feeling? Do I miss him? <laughs> no. Because his presence is still felt. His grip on the city may have loosened, but he still pulls strings from his jail cell. I think I figured out how Fisk's men are keeping his rackets running. Construction sites. Using the cover of legitimate city development to house stolen goods, drugs, firearms. The city grows with crime and he still has to deal with Fisk's criminal activities. This isn't the outcome he envisaged, as the cuffs were put on Wilson Fisk. And there is still the matter of those masked men and that strange energy. And that file they wanted so much. Fisk apparently tied into this as well somehow. Building a lab for Norman Osborne? What is Devil's Breath? MJ is just as curious. You still have that mask from the gallery? I'm actually on my way to the Feast Center now to ask Martin Lee about it. He has a degree in art history. If anyone knows about the origins of that mask, he will. Just keep me in the loop. Like I said, I think there's a bigger story here, and I plan to be the one to break it. So I guess we're talking again. Cool. The mask is their only lead. Peter. What can I do for you? I have a friend, Mary Jane. She's a reporter. She's doing a story on art imports, and she found this piece. She wanted an expert opinion on it. Let's see what you have. Where did she find it? I'm really not sure. Martin Lee recognizes this Chinese opera mask and the symbol on its back. He remembers it vividly from a story his father told him as a child. The fear he felt then appears to linger even now. This symbol here roughly translates to demon. Demon? Peter, listen. That mask, it's, it could be connected to dangerous people. Mary Jane might want to find a different story. Why take the risk? Peter had a sense of the dramatic childhood present in Lee's past. The sight of this mask, that name, demon, clearly unsettled him. Martin Lee was a busy man, a successful man in money and philanthropy. Maybe his success was driven by the need for distraction from traumas unresolved. Feast was his passion, it was clear, so he was lucky to have May there to keep things running. He was kept away often with his other ventures. Just wanted to let you know I'm headed out of town. You're in charge while I'm gone. It's some personal business I've been planning for a while. 
please take care of this place. It represents the best part of me. Well, I guess I better get busy. And so must Peter. The city never sleeps. And it's rare that Peter gets time to. If he's not taking down deviants, he's tweaking and creating gadgets to aid the work. And there's always repairs to make on his suit. The lab is a perfect place to do it when Otto's not there. There was that time when Peter thought he'd been unmasked by him. But Otto assumed, as others do, Spider-Man couldn't be a geek like Peter. The lie that Peter fashioned was that he helped Spider-Man out sometimes with designing and fixing suits and gadgets. He trusted Otto, of course, but there was safety in secrecy. Otto bought it. Otto even helped with ideas and designs after that. Spider-Man had many prototypes in a rainbow of colours and capabilities, but within those he had his favourites. To him, you cannot beat the classic red and blue. Hello, New York! Preparation was everything, and he needed to be prepared for this emerging group. These demons are clearly looking to strike fear into the city. Despite Lee's warning, Peter and MJ need to know more. It's Yuri who calls with the first lead. They've been pretty busy tonight, hitting a lot of Fisk properties. They're going after Fisk? The demons have risen fastest in this power vacuum. Are they looking to eradicate the competition too? They decide to stake out one of Fisk's properties, a shipyard yet to be hit, to lie in wait for this demon threat. This time, Yuri supplies help. One of her best police officers. His name's Jefferson Davis. He's a good cop. Been working the Fisk case for years. If anyone knows what's going on at that shipyard, it's him. Officer Davis. And you are? Uh, just messing with you. My son's a big fan. It's rare to find a competent, capable, caring cop in the NYPD, but Jefferson is that. And they knuckled down together well to find signs of what the demons may be after. Notice anything about the floor? Clear. Think you can help me out? This thing's heavy. They search the shipyard, find the weapons cache, but are seconds late. How'd they beat us here? The demons have been stripping Fisk of his weapons caches all night and they are here for this one. Get him! Jefferson helps confront them. You okay? I'll get you! Spider-Man stops the fleeing trucks. Jefferson Davies is selfless and quick to react. We've now identified the officer as Jefferson Davis. We're being told he has minor injuries and is expected to make a full recovery. An ordinary hero saves a superhero. Jefferson's bravery acknowledged and Spider-Man has a new member of his inner circle. Jefferson, while convalescing, has more information on the demons. What's up? Just got a tip that the demons are moving on the Fisk construction site in Midtown. I'll do a swing by, let you know what I find. He finds a demon presence. Fisk men tied up. <coughs> Fisk's territory is ours now. Demons leaving the site in vans liveried with the company name Consolidated Shipping. Find the rest. The boss wants them dead. Who is the boss? In saving the surviving Fisk men, ascending to meet the fleeing helicopter. Oh, come on. And preventing as much damage to the metropolis as he can. Spider-Man finds and apprehends the man in charge of this assault. Hopeful, he has nipped this demon threat in the bud. Peter, it's Dr. Octavius. Peter neglecting his other job again. I totally forgot. Uh, I'll be there soon. Today is a big day for Octavius Industries. Their first trial subject. The kinks have been addressed. It's time to see the prosthetic in action for real. Yes. <laughs> a huge leap forward. Hey, what do you think you're doing? And as is the pattern for them, many more leaps back. This site's been declared a safety hazard. Peter Parker, how the hell are you? Norman Osborn, the owner of Oscorp, the current mayor of New York, and the father of Peter's best friend, Harry. Norman, what do you think you're doing? You're free to continue your work in a secure environment. At Oscorp. You always were the smartest guy in the room. You haven't changed a bit. Neither of you. There is history here. An animosity built of jealousy, ego, and deep grudges. They used to be friends, colleagues, and former business partners. 
Otto would later explain to Peter the reason behind their mutual disdain. I'm half the reason it's called Oscorp. In grad school, everyone called us the O's. <sighs> Add Corp to that and, well, it is a catchy name. Well, why'd you leave? He started a project I considered unethical. I chose to leave in exchange for a settlement. But Peter has a different history with Osborne, one of encouragement, opportunity, and moments of support. He decided against Norman's offer to join his company out of college, but he remembers him most fondly from the fleeting moments he saw him as a child when he played with Harry in the Osborne family penthouse apartment with their enormous TV screen, swimming pool, and unbeatable views before Harry's mother died, Emily, Norman's wife. Hey, Peter. Harry will be coming back from Europe early next year. Maybe the two of you can start that business you always talked about. The wind has been knocked from Otto. They, they didn't take everything. Maybe we could start over. Without the grant from the city, I can no longer pay you. If I were you, I'd look for a new job. If Harry were here, maybe they'd talk about a business venture together. They had no shortage of ideas. Harry had recently been putting his late mother's idea of research stations into action. Pods, dotted around the city, each one has a purpose. Monitoring air pollution, wildlife, chemical spills, solutions for the city's refuse and energy saving. Harry left Peter messages at these pods with instructions to perhaps help keep them running to purpose while he's in Europe. Emily Osborne had always been environmentally conscious and her design of each one of these pods helped reduce the city's environmental impact. Harry persuaded his father to fund them initially, but they needed to ultimately fund themselves. Now, I launched them, but now that I'm away, uh, Oscorp's gonna shut them down unless they prove their value. Peter does what he can to keep them afloat. As long as they're here, it's like a part of my mom is too. The research station's kept alive for another day, at least. I wish I could tell Harry, but He's not answering calls, texts, anything. Peter, Harry, MJ, inseparable in their younger years. With age, and as the world draws us towards our passions, it can draw us away from our friends. The heroics of Jefferson Davies in working with Spider-Man garnered the attention of the press and is seen by Norman Osborn as the perfect press opportunity in his mayoral re-election campaign. Peter is in the crowd to see Jefferson honoured at the Osborne Rally. I share this honour with my family, my wife Rio and my son Miles. Norman leaving the stage to take a call. Yes? I've worked many years for this moment. Who is this? Over the coming days, your company, your city, and everything you care about will be destroyed. Listen, jackass, why don't you grow a pair and tell me what you want? To watch you suffer. Peter sensed the incoming attack from the demons. He saw the glow emanating from the individuals dotted around the rally. The glow from that mysterious energy he had seen before. There was nothing he could do about the blasts, but protect those he could. Get down! Dad! Jefferson Davies, on the podium, only had time to do the same. Miles, are you okay? Can you hear me, baby? Miles had one instinct, to head towards the stage, the last place he saw his father, past the unconscious Peter Parker, through the fallen scaffolding, around the blasting energy weapons from the demons adding to the casualty count, his anger rising at the glowing figure looming over his recumbent father, and that voice that prevented his death. Enough! We have to leave. Now! Dad! And no! Miles' father died a hero while being honoured as a hero. But then, and days later, as the eulogies were read and condolences given, that was little consolation. His father, his hero, was gone. Before the explosion, as Peter's senses were peaked, he saw the figure of Martin Lee, his last image before the blast rendered him unconscious. It was unbelievable. Martin Lee? May will be crushed. He was, but he was sure it was him. Yuri would need more though, before she directed police resources to a respected member of the business community. Get me some solid evidence and we'll talk. Solid evidence. 
Right. MJ's investigative skill set tracks the property location owned by Lee. Spider-Man scopes them out. Demons. I talked with a detective about questioning the arrested demons. They're all claiming Martin Lee has the power to, quote, corrupt people. They say it's sort of like mind control. It brings out the negative part of you, makes you do things you wouldn't normally do. That negative energy channeled through these weapons. Spider-Man clears the locations, a recycling center and a delivery depot for that familiar name, Consolidated Shipping. He finds the following. Plans for truck bombs, locations of demon bases around the city. Looks like the demons have an army. And a plan of attack on multiple Osborne campaign offices. We must have some kind of beef with Norman Osborne. Martin Lee, Aunt May's boss, a man Peter respects as much as anyone, somehow has the ability to corrupt, bend minds to his will. He has amassed an army, posted them around the city, taken advantage of Fisk's demise, taken his weapons cache, his explosives, all to direct an attack on one man and his interests, Norman Osborn. But why? Norman is powerful, he has enemies, but Martin Lee, he wants to eviscerate him. On departing, Spider-Man comes face to face with Norman Osborn's solution to this threat. Uh, release him! He works with us! This is Silver Sablanova. Head of Sable International, a private security force, paid for by Mayor Osborne. Next time you get in my way, I will not be so gentle. The blast at the Osborne rally, the continued threat by the demons had Mayor Osborne enact executive powers. New York now has a military presence, posted throughout the city, setting up checkpoints, conducting searches, curtailing flow. Stay clear of my line of fire, Spider-Man. Sable has the mayor's ear and unchecked authority. This is not the city Peter grew up in. Martin Lee, these demons, they have corrupted it far beyond what it was during Fisk's tenure. Peter heads for the familiar, Feast still doing what it can for the city's homeless, and within, Peter can find out more on the secret side of Lee. Around his office were accolades for the good he gave. Lee did so much for New York, I can't believe he was hiding such darkness inside him. And evidence of that darkness was hidden behind a portrait of his deceased parents. Past that point lived hate and obsession. Obsession for Norman Osborne and a realization that his powers are fueled by this hate. Father would say I've lost the path of balance that he could never understand. The only way to fight a monster is to become one. Balance an eternal struggle for Lee. Feast, all the good work he gave to the city, all to counter the hatred he feels and the revenge he craves. Lee has now turned his back on that struggle and has lent into the darkness, to the negative side of himself. Before leaving, Peter also finds the file. The file with those words, devil's breath. This might help us figure out what Lee's planning next. Maybe the fleeting visit from Lee was for that file. Hello, Peter. Mr. Lee, I thought you were out of town. Did you find what you were looking for? Lee cares for Feast, cares for May, cares for Peter, but has advice for him. I don't think you or May have anything to worry about, as long as you stay away from places you're not supposed to be. Well, I should go. When will you be back? When my work is done. It's not clear when Martin Lee deduced that Peter was Spider-Man, but this veiled threat, the corruption he then bestowed on the people of Feast, stops his pursuit wait, wait, wait. for now. Martin Lee, the demons will attack again. That file isn't clear, but it does suggest something. I think he's going to use something called Devil's Breath. What is it? A substance created by Oscorp, probably a bioweapon of some kind. They need a lead. Peter has lost one mentor in his life, but he had more. He admired Otto so much for his pluck. Norman Osborne had pulled the rug from under their prosthetics project, but Otto would frequently call Peter oozing with optimism and was hopeful that he could bring him back into the fold soon. I don't want to jinx this, but the lead I'm following might not only get the project back on its feet, but also expand it in ways we never could have imagined. These calls escalated in excitement until... Parker, exciting news. Come by the lab. This is my defining moment. Can't wait to show you. Hey, doctor. 
Hello, Peter. Peter had not been to the lab since the day Norman Osborne pulled the funding. It was messier than he left it, but the clutter exuded a fresh buzz of industry. Otto exuded that same buzz. He had been busy. Just getting started. Until now, we've been looking at prosthetics from the wrong perspective. Why restore people to what they were when we can make them better? He had secured more funding through a corporate think tank, begged and borrowed new equipment, subcontracted his genius, troubleshooting the RAF security systems. Figured I'd try my hand. Lucrative contract. He even had the time to spitball designs for limb enhancements transcending human form. Doc really does want to imagine a better version of man. Despite the funding not quite there to pay him, Peter is so happy to see Otto on top again, he's glad to help him progress the project. Don't worry, I'll figure it out. What's a few bucks when you're trying to change the world, right? Troubleshooting, refining, failing. Damn it! This is all your fault, Norman, you son of a- Then improving iteratively. Peter helped design a neural interface that translates the movement of the prosthetic from brain signals. If our prosthesis is anything less than effortless to use, we'll have failed. In no time, their progress was nothing short of astounding. I'd call that a mild success. I'd call that unbelievable. Yet over this time, and perhaps before, Peter had noticed a change in Otto. Despite his enthusiasm and bright eyes, his body was not keeping the pace of his mind. My doctors call it a degenerative neurological disorder. You're the only one who knows, Peter. I'd like to keep it that way. Otto's increased endeavor is not only born out of his passion for the work, but out of time. For him, time is running out. At this rate, he'll lose control of his motor functions within a year. And if we're not careful, an intracranial implant could make things even worse even alter his personality. My work can improve millions of lives. It can also save my own. I just need more time. Peter will continue to help buy him that time. Peter and MJ would also spend more time together, mulling over the information they did have. The file on Devil's Breath. The knowledge that Martin Lee would attack again soon. But where? Peter was to follow up on the only lead that they had for a while. A report of a break-in at the penthouse of the Oscorp CFO. His name, Charles Standish. Demons. They have taken Charles Standish hostage. It's safe now. What were they after? Just financial records. About Devil's Breath? I don't even know what it is. Mr. Osborne's been pouring money into it for years, but he keeps the whole project a secret. I'm the only one who has any record of it. Not anymore. Looks like they copied some records to a secure server. Payroll information on a Dr. Isaac Delaney. Who is he? For the demons, Charles Standish was the start of a trail of breadcrumbs that would lead them to Devil's Breath. His records revealed the name, Isaac Delaney, a scientist employed by Norman Osborne. MJ tracked him down reveling at a Halloween party at Peter's alma mater, ESU. This time, Martin Lee was there to extract the next clue. You recently began working with someone in an Oscorp lab. Tell me his name. Dr. Morgan Michaels. Thank you. Dr. Morgan Michaels is the head scientist on Norman Osborne's Devil's Breath project. For Martin Lee, he is the key to getting their hands on this bioweapon. Yuri, I need your help. You need to find a Dr. Morgan Michaels. Martin Lee's coming after him. Copy that. While the team at large locate Morgan Michaels, Spider-Man heads to the source, the epicenter of where all this originates. Everything leads back to Norman Osborne. Guess it's time to pay him a visit. He breaks into Oscorp Tower, past Sable security and into Norman Osborne's personal files. There's no information on the lab location, but the purpose of Devil's Breath is right there. Whoa, GR-27 is Devil's Breath. It could cure any genetic disease. Cystic fibrosis, Huntington's, this is crazy. Dr. Michaels keeps the only sample with him at all times. We find Michaels, we find Devil's Breath. After the attack on Norman Osborne's mayoral rally, Norman put an army on the city streets. He also employed that same army to protect himself and his interests. Silver Sablanova's brief as head of Sable International was to keep Devil's Breath secret and safe at all costs. Because if it got out, it could start a pandemic that could threaten the lives of everyone. 
Those involved with Devil's Breath were under Sable's protection. They snatched up Charles Standish after the break-in, and they have Dr. Morgan Michaels and the only sample of Devil's Breath. They are moving him to a safe house under armed guard. Just be careful. In the wrong hands, this could- Don't worry. We're the best in the world. I feel better already. Code 381. Package is on the move. The demons have reached their prize. Devil's Breath and the means to make more in Dr. Morgan Michaels. Welcome aboard, Doctor. Spider-Man, the entire city can't afford to let them escape. Lee, hand it over! Spider-Man experiences firsthand Martin Lee's power, his ability to persuade, to corrupt. What are you doing to me? Giving you a new perspective. Demanding him wear the mask that allows him and those he corrupts to do things, evil things we could only ever imagine. I won't abandon you in the darkness, Martin! What? Destroy the mask! Spider-Man resists Lee's persuasion and adheres to the balance that Lee has left far behind him. The yin and the yang, the light and the dark, the good and the evil in all of us. Peter believes, he hopes, everyone can be persuaded to the light. Dr. Morgan Michael saved, but Devil's Breath is gone. Martin Lee has his biological weapon and he plans to use it. The only lead they have is something MJ heard from Charles Standish. Just a location, that's it. Grand Central Station. It's while MJ is investigating this lead, walking through the exhibits of the Oscorp exposition there, that Martin Lee enacts his attack. This will be easier for everyone if you remain calm and do as I say. He takes commuters hostage, rigs his Devil's Breath bioweapon and makes his call. What do you want? I want you at Grand Central Terminal in 30 minutes, or there'll be more blood on your hands. This must have been Lee's plan all along. Make Norman responsible by forcing him to release the Devil's Breath himself. Since Peter bumped into MJ almost a month ago at Wilson Fisk's estate sale, they have come together as partners. Not romantically, as their friendship had once developed, but as a team. Born out of necessity to combat the threat to the city they grew up in, MJ had lamented how often Peter came to her rescue when she didn't want it, or his insistence that she stay away from harm's way. What do you mean? I trust you? Yeah, when I'm sitting at home behind a laptop. But they were both here, using their skills and their determinations together now to subvert catastrophe. Misdirecting, isolating, decommissioning to save the city from catastrophe. Do it. Start the timer. Martin Lee seeks a safe distance. Spider-Man controls the enemy crowd. MJ disarms the bioweapon. Got it. Devil's Breath contained. Finally, and kick his ass. Lee's getting away. Finally. Lee knows he can't corrupt him, but he will direct all the energy he can gather at Spider-Man. The man stopping the one thing he wanted most for years. Revenge. You're sick! Let me help you, Martin! It totally worked last time. Next up, prison. Another villain caught by Spider-Man for the Raft facility. Folks, the mastermind of the City Hall bombing has finally been brought to justice. Martin Lee's evil side, or as everyone is now calling him, Mr. Negative has been revealed as the culprit for the City Hall bombing. Get that cargo back to the lab. Let's move! In Peter's focus on Martin Lee, he had been neglecting a promise to himself to keep an eye on Dr. Octavius and help him achieve his goal. He swaps his spider suit for his lab coat and enters Octavius Industries. Hello? Parker! W wait, w where are the arms? Oh, wow. So cool. But how did you... Intracranial neural network. Neurotransmission speeds under one nanosecond. We did it, Peter. No one can take this away from us. They had done it. Prosthesis limb control with the mind. The ability to free the world of mobility disabilities. The mind transcending the human body. 
and your work on the neural web was the key. But we haven't even tested it yet. There's so much we don't know. It works beautifully. Uh, come on, take a look. It works now, but the system is set to tip. It's time to show the world what we've done. Otto, the neural web isn't isolating your motor neurons. It could be affecting other parts of your brain, your, your inhibitions, your mood. I just think we need some more tests. We've got enough tests! For the first time in my life, I don't feel like a failure. I feel like me. But this could permanently damage your mind. Please. Right. Right. I'll keep at it. I'll work out some bugs. Go. Thank you, Peter. For everything. Take you live to Grand Central Terminal, where Mayor Osborne is about to address the media. Martin Lee is now behind bars. When I make a promise to this city, I keep it. We are all safer now than we have ever been. Liar! You have no idea what you're in for. Peter Parker knew firsthand what it was to lose a parent. And at Jefferson's funeral, he got to know Rio and Miles Morales. Miles was persuaded that volunteering at Feast, helping others would be a good way to get a handle on his grief and a way to honor who his father was. Hi, Miles. Nice to see you. I'll grab an apron and I'll show you around. Aunt May still valued what Martin Lee started in Feast, and despite his dissent, knew he wanted to keep this part of himself alive. But the Martin I know couldn't have done that. Whatever's become of him, that's not the one I want to remember. Feast would be in safe hands with May. Hey, turn it up. I want to hear this. A spokesperson for the police has confirmed that this was the truck carrying the device used in the Grand Central Terminal attack. Devil's Breath apprehended again. But who? With Martin Lee behind bars, are the demons still carrying out his will? The Devil's Breath is gone, but we got even bigger problems. Rikers? We have to hurry. Hop on. The inmates of Rikers prison are escaping and have looted the armory. We're minutes away from every prisoner in Rikers walking right up Fifth Avenue. This was an externally coordinated attack because out over the water, the inmates of Raft are also emerging including many of the figures Spider-Man has battled, worn down, and put away over the last eight years. Electro. Ah! Rhino. Hope you like surprise, Spider! Scorpion. This is too good to be true. And Vulture. We're going to have so much fun! And as Spider-Man chases them to Raft's highest point, they are joined by Martin Lee. Remember, he said not to kill him. All liberated, working together and orchestrated by Dr. Octavius. First and final warning. Stay out of our way. Each of you has a job to do. Your debts will be repaid when we're done. Dr. Octavius had ignored Peter's worried pleas. The neural interface allowed him to wield his multiple arms, gave him a power transcending his own failing limbs, but has aided his mind, like Lee, to give in to his hate. And the job they need to do now is eviscerate Norman Osborne. And they start by tearing down everything he has built. It's over, Norman. Time to give them the truth. Dr. Octavius releases Norman Osborne's creation, Devil's Breath, into Times Square. What he hoped he could develop into a cure currently causes harm, ripping apart human cells, causing debilitating sickness, a sickness that spreads and can eventually kill. New York on fire. A pandemic rages, with the sick getting sicker and more succumbing to the pandemic every day. Services ground to a halt. Escapees rampage and occupy the city. Sable International's powers of control now knows no limits. Checkpoints, quarantines, people rounded up and incarcerated indiscriminately. Norman Osborne still mayor, publicly deflecting blame towards Spider-Man. Peter's transit through the city curtailed because he's a marked man. 
Sable under orders to detain on site. What is happening to our city, Yuri? I don't know. Feels like the end of the world. Maybe it is. And Peter has lost yet another friend. Dr. Octavius, why? How did I let this happen? Peter has a history of taking the world's burden solely on his shoulders, but despite the betrayals, he still has trust in his friends. He can't do this alone. The city is in danger. It needs our help. All of our help. All right, we'll call the play, coach. Mary Jane will use her investigative skills to find out about the validity and whereabouts of the anti-serum to Devil's Breath that Oscorp is promising. We need to find the cure and protect it. I'll chase down some leads. Miles will safeguard Feast, source and procure supplies and antibiotics, support Aunt May, help the people of New York. All right, you got it. What are you going to do? Spider-Man will track and take down the Raft MVPs because Dr. Octavius has put them to work. It was when Spider-Man found Dr. Octavius's Times Square hideout that their plan and the reason for their obedience to him became clear. They were all promised something they needed, something only Dr. Ox's genius could offer. Martin Lee was given bespoke medication to stabilize his negative episodes. Rhino was promised freedom from his battle suit. For Vulture, a cure for the cancer that his wings wrought upon him. Scorpion, money and a clean slate. And Electro, an increase in the electrical energy that courses through him. And with their help, he could cure his own need for revenge. But I have only one thought on my mind now. Norman's reputation lying in tatters before me. Otto's tasked the villains to destroy Oscorp holdings throughout the city. He's trying to take apart Norman's empire piece by piece. Power, communication, public safety. Each of them has a role. Electro to disable Oscorp power plants. Rhino enacting hit and runs, destroying supply stores, working his way to Oscorp's shoreline properties. Scorpion at the city's reservoir to deploy his poison. Martin Lee is targeting the location of the Devil's Breath anti-serum. Vulture, disturbingly, has a role here in Times Square. And the last stage of the plan, an all-out attack on Oscorp. And most likely, Norman. They need to be stopped. Huh? Need a lift? This is Vulture's role. Spider-Man battles Vulture and Electro. What's happening? If you really cared about this city, you'd be helping me expose Osborne for the criminal he is. You're sick. You need help. I have all the help I need. Two of those helpers are at the shoreline. Pick on someone your own size, Rhino. Let's finish this. Spider-Man wraps them up and sends them back to Raft. Four of the escapees have been taken out of the equation. He had battled these men many times over the years, but Martin Lee, he used to look up to him, but he has to take him down again. Otto's battle plan stated that he was heading for the Devil's Breath lab, but where is it? MJ was hot on its trail, sneaking into the penthouse she spent so much time as a kid, the home of Norman Osborne and her friend Harry. The opulence, the money, never sat well with her, and Harry found a kinship in that. Nothing made him happier than watching cartoons on the little TV in May's kitchen. But there's no time to reminisce. Norman locked up Harry's room, wants it untouched for when Harry returns from Europe. MJ finds the key, opens Harry's room. What? This can't be for Harry, can it? Why didn't you tell us you were sick? Harry Osborne, without telling his closest friends, suffered a disorder, osh turan syndrome, the same hereditary disease that took his mother years before. A neurological disorder that slowly, then all at once, affects mobility, cognition, and organ function. He was tested for the condition as a child, and before his mother's death, Norman Osborne had poured millions, subverting all the regulations to try to produce a cure. He wasn't going to Europe. He was to undertake treatment that could take months, if not years. They called the treatment Devil's Breath. 
Administered by Dr. Morgan Michaels, Harry was told he had a 50-50 chance. His absence suggests the worst. Norman returns flanked by Sable. The antiserum is ready, and I'm going to supervise production. You will be completely vulnerable without me. MJ cannot leave to follow him. She must find the lab location here. MJ sleuths her way into a secret room. This isn't the Devil's Breath lab. Specimens of spider. Is Norman trying to reverse engineer Peter's abilities? Bioelectrokinesis, optical camouflage? What the hell is he trying to create? No! Before she accidentally frees the spider, before she alerted Silver Sablanova into Norman's secret home laboratory, MJ found the location of the Devil's Breath lab. She also found an old video, filmed years prior. In that video was a young Martin Lee. MJ copies the data, takes cover in silence despite the discomfort. They have the Devil's Breath lab location. Will they have completed an antiserum? A cure? Norman Osborne is there, but so is Martin Lee. Dr. Michaels has finished the antiserum. No, Martin! Why do you insist on trying to save this piece of scum? I'm trying to save you, Martin! Don't let revenge win. Fight it! Lee's hatred for Osborne has existed for years. His family turned to Oscorp for help with Martin's rare condition as a child. Norman saw this as an opportunity to progress the clinical trials of GR27, Devil's Breath. He survived, but is now imbued with negative electric energy. He later learned to control it, but that day in the lab, back in 1986, he could not. It killed both of his parents. It also ended the working relationship between Norman and Otto Octavius. What have you done? My parents died because of me. Because of what Osborne did to me. Osborne must see justice. The selfish, terrible acts committed by Norman were made out of the fear of losing the ones he loved. But instead of safeguarding love, they gave birth to hate. Osborne needs to pay. I know. But this is the wrong way, Martin. Useless. Ready for your final act? Spider-Man is broken. Otto's limb design is too strong and too fast. Dr. Octavius has the anti-serum. Recovering at Feast's treatment center, he learns just how badly he needs to get it back. They say she could go at any moment. I don't know if I can beat him. Maybe you can't. Maybe Spider-Man needs help from his friend Peter. Peter helped create Dr. Octopus. Using his knowledge and powers, he can prepare what he needs to take him down. The anti-Oc suit will give him all the power he needs. And once again, we have live footage of Mayor Osborne being held captive on the roof of Oscorp Tower. Tell them what you did! I... Otto has been upstaged by Norman all his career. A career blighted by failure. You're a failure, Otto! And you always will be! No more. <laughs> Spider-Man sees justice differently. Norman Osborn has been able to live with his actions because to him it has been in service of a greater purpose, to save his son. After this moment, once the shock has subsided, he will visit Harry at his penthouse, behind the portrait he had commissioned before Harry's treatment, into his secret room in the shuttered chamber overlooked by MJ. Harry lies in stasis, engulfed in the black material keeping him alive. 
I will find a cure. I love you, son. Give me the anti-serum! We don't have much time! Please! I'll turn over the anti-serum when Osborne paid for his crime! Yeah. He has to lose everything! Hate corrupts, but the catalyst for Otto's actions has always been the device they created together. What has enabled these terrible weapons? The neural interface. Spider-Man exposes their creation. Parker. You knew? Otto had made light of his discovery all those weeks ago. In their lab, that damaged suit, content to let Peter keep his secret. You knew? He knew and still tried to hurt him. He hurt his friends, his Aunt May, who he knows is sick and dying and still knowing won't give him the cure to save her. I won't let you win. This means too much to me. There is no saving his friend. The man he admires most in the world is gone. Not more than it means to me. <laughs> If they put me away, they'll take my arms! Peter? Peter! Spider-Man has the anti-serum. We'll need the entire sample as a base to produce more doses. What if we use it to cure someone right now? Then there won't be enough to cure the others. Aunt May knows what must be done, but before she succumbs to her illness, she needs to see her nephew behind the mask. I've known for a while, and I am so proud of you. All the people you've saved. In dying, despite the presence of a cure, she continues the habit of a lifetime by helping everyone. The anti-serum was synthesized. The city started to return to normal, without the disgraced mayor at the helm. Most of the escapees were put back in their cells, joined by some new faces. The demons subsided, the checkpoints and quarantines dismantled, the streets cleaned up. Months would go by. With the reduction of crime and without a job to go to, Peter had time to take his eyes off the city for a moment and refocus and rekindle what he had closest to him. He could be himself with MJ, one of the few people that knew his whole identity. And in the coming days, he would find himself letting someone else into that exclusive club. Miles had a secret too. After MJ left Norman's secret room, she delivered something to feast. Miles was there to receive it. <coughs> He needed to share his secret with someone, and Peter had been there for him as much as anyone. Hey, so Pete? Yeah? I uh, kind of got to talk to you about something I can't tell my mom about. I think it's better that I just, um, I show you. It's pretty weird, right? Not that weird. To be continued. Subscribe and hit the bell to be ready for when that story is released. Like the video if you did, and if you would like to support me and watch the story of Miles Morales ad-free right now, head over to Patreon. Thank you to all my patrons who support this work. Join them, head over to the link on the screen to see what you could be watching before anyone else right now. I'm The Patient Wolf, and this has been the story of Marvel's Spider-Man.